Hi everyone and welcome to day four of Cavemus. If this is your fourth Cavemus viewing, thank you very much, it's appreciated. Today you can see I am sporting a knitted version of my Santa hat. This is my outside Santa hat, it's a bit easier to clean when I'm uh, working with the cows and things. I'm just back in from outside, we've had some babies born so I was making sure that they were okay before we commenced today's video. I am trying to provide as much variety as possible with these videos and as the week goes on things are going to get a little bit more exciting. So I wanted to kind of dial it back a bit today and do one of my favourite things which is just to sketch in my sketchbook. The reference image that I'm using is available over over on the cave website. The link to the website is in the description. So if you want to have a shot later on or follow along, then you can grab that and you will have the reference photo there right beside you. Okay, so I think that's everything just now. Let's just get to top down view and we can get going. Right, so sticking with my uh, red theme, with my lovely nails, here is what I am drawing today. And normally in my sketchbook I like to sketch in graphite, but I thought it would be a little bit more fun if we used colour. One of the things that I want to do is to try and get the shading with the coloured pencil down. And it's really good to do exercises like this because this is what really refines your basic sketching skills by picking a sim simple subject and really taking some time over it and really I just want to chill out this afternoon I'm still really busy with um, cows calving and work and obviously filming cavemus videos and I just want this chance to kind of chill out and just to do a bit of sketching. So what I've got here is a red call erase pencil. Any erasable coloured pencil will do. I have recently discovered these Pilot Colour Eno pencils which is a mechanical pencil with coloured lead and you do get, I think it's like a pinky red one of these so that would be really good as well if you don't want to have the sort of muddy um, graphite lines if you're going to do it in colour. I like these because they do erase well and at the sketching stage that's what you want and I'm just going to continue on in this page of my sketchbook. I was kind of doodling festive things the other night just when I was sitting having a cup of tea. So uh, we're just going to work in this section here. I have also provided on the website a grayscale version of the reference image and I have done that for those of you that want to try and graphite so that you can get a really good hold on where the light and the dark is. A lot of you will know I do a lot of dog portraits and I find it easier sometimes to convert a picture into black and white so that I can really gauge where the shading's going if it's going to be a graphite drawing. So I thought that might be helpful. But today I'm going to go in colour because I don't normally go in colour. I really want to colour in these um, stripes on this candy cane though. <laughs> That's been, uh, it's been kind of like winking at me for the last wee while. Right, that's me happy. I can move on with my life now. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to get these basic shapes down. So obviously I have the item in front of me and what I want to start with is just blocking out some of that basic shape, just using simple shapes. And that'll just let me start to look at proportions. Now this is quite a complex shape, but it is made up of simple shapes. So we should be able to break it down relatively easily. And I'm, I'm just taking each sort of curl of the bow at a time. And if you can get down one, roughly to what you want it to look like. It makes it a lot easier to kind of use that as like a like an anchor point to do the rest of it. But what that's going to let me do is make a sort of semi-circle so that I know roughly where the shape of the rest of the parts of the bow should go. And this is just very rough. But it just helps, you know, because sometimes you can get carried away on like one detailed section. Now there is a point that maybe sticks up further than that. Uh, you can get carried away doing one little section and before you know where you are, your drawing's really off or really skewed. And I want to try and avoid that if possible. And I'm just trying to work out roughly where the back of this little tin is. So it's kind of, if that's the bottom of the curve, it's slightly below that. So I'm going to put this in almost as like a horizon line. So straight away, just by using a couple of straight lines and a couple of arcs, 
I've got like a really solid basis for working out where everything's going to go and what that's going to let me do now is just work my way around. Now immediately I'm seeing that proportion wise this line here is wrong so I've been able to see that almost straight away so I can take this out and I can adjust it accordingly. So already I've been able to pick out a fault with my with my drawing you know straight off the bat so that is really really helpful. I am working it was like really really bright sunlight earlier on but it's getting duller and duller so I'm also working within the confines of having enough light to film by and not upsetting what's you know what's in front of me here. If you are struggling with things like that though you can just work from a photograph but everyone that I've spoken to has told me right from the very beginning it's always better to draw from life and it is more difficult to draw from life and I know this because I have struggled with that. There is quite a sort of sharp line there. And when I'm sketching this line down here, I'm looking down the bottom to see where it is in relation to the edge of this part. And then I've got this little bit tucked in behind. And again, this almost meets with the corner of this one, so that's another good reference point. And I've realised as well that this part in the middle, this is actually slightly off centre, like where the fold is. It kind of looks like a lily, doesn't it? <laughs> This uh, this little tin will appear in a later video. <laughs> you will, you will see in a later video. It's very difficult. See when you're filming, you know, so many videos so close together, and you tend to film sort of bits and bobs of one video, and then you jump about a bit depending on what's going on. And uh, sometimes you can get a bit kind of mixed up. <laughs> yeah, that's like I don't want to spoil anything for anyone. Now there isn't much of a gap between this. I do think this needs to be longer down here. Again I'm not actually too bothered about the, sh the, the shape of like the corners of the tin or anything. I, I just want to have the surface and it's so that I can put in some of the shadow you know that's reflecting you know because of where the reflection is because the tin is shiny. So I'm just going to take this arc line away now because I don't need it now. There we go that's pretty good. So what I want to do is refine some of these shapes a bit more and make sure I'm absolutely happy before I go in with my actual coloured pencil. Righto, I am fighting the light once again. I don't know how far I'm going to get with this, but if it starts to get too dark for me to see, I will just continue this filming in the morning. So all I'm doing here is taking my kneaded eraser and I'm just trying to lighten up some of these lines. They're not going to lighten tremendously because kneaded erasers are really designed for picking up graphite, but it will take away some of it which is absolutely grand. So I'm going to start, I'm going to use some polychromos pencils and I'm going to start with light cadmium red which is almost an orange colour but when you actually look at the reflections on the lightest part of the bow they are sort of heading into that territory and we can build everything up in layers so if, even if it's not quite the right colour to begin with we can soon work with it and just start to shape it into something that looks a bit more like the reference image. So uh, the same thing again, I'm just going to work my way around and I want to start with this this section here and I really just want to do what I always do and I, <laughs> I always feel kind of silly saying this now because I say it all the time but always start with this first light layer so I'm just going to go over the entire thing. Now you can see the way I'm holding my pencil it's not the traditional way to hold a pencil. Number one it's because I'm uh, you know the pencil's a little bit shorter but by using it on its side so if this is the paper I'm, I'm really like bringing that angle down so that I'm using more the side of the of the core rather than the tip and it's just to help me get a, a smoother layer of colour because this is a very very smooth object. Now the smoothness will obviously it will intensify the more layers we put down because the more the colour evens itself out. So when you're at this first stage you do the first thing you don't do is panic. There will be no panicking and you think oh, oh it's the wrong colour or oh this looks terrible or oh my pencil colouring skills aren't good enough. I say poppycock 
and we just have to do it in layers. Now by just doing one of these little rolls at a time, what it's going to help me do is figure out the colour balance and then once I've got the correct set of colours, it's easier for me to replicate it on all the other parts. So the other colour that I want to try and get is a really, really dark red because there is a really stark contrast between the centre part of this and the outer parts. And unsurprisingly and unimaginatively, I think it is dark red is the closest pencil I'm going to have. Dark red, there we go. I'm also quite aware of this candle. It's quite close to my elbow. I don't want to set my shirt on fire. <laughs> this is a new shirt. This is important to me. So I'm just sticking a couple of layers down and I'm just going to like feather the edge ever so slightly. If you're unsure about working in this level of detail, one thing you can do is scale it up. You know, st start big, make your drawing really big and then you've got lots of room to work in the different areas. And that is a great way to be able to work on something that has a fair amount of detail without sort of restricting yourself or stressing yourself out that your you know your motor skills aren't quite there now i want to shift to pale geranium lake i'm just going to pop down another layer on top of my cadmium. So for the lightest part of the image I'm satisfied that that's the colour I want the lightest part to be. So still using the same pencil I'm just going to build up some layers and try and get these lines in. Okay, so now we just want to intensify these colours. I'm quite happy about the placement and the way that it's looking. So I just want to get really nice rich colour in now. And the only way I'm going to achieve that is to layer these up a little bit. Right, I'm going to have to stop there guys because I've kind of run out of light but I'll, again like the other video it's not going to make any difference to you I'll just run this all together but I'll see you in the morning and we will finish colouring this. Hello everybody it's the next day and as you can see I have um, I have resurrected my candle. I've picked out another two pencils to work with when we get into some of the darker sections in the middle here. So in addition to the three polychromos that we already had, I've also picked out Red Violet and Payne's Grey, which we're going to use just as I say in these darker sections. So I'm just in the middle section here, I'm just going to pop down a layer of this dark red. No, uh, Red Violet, sorry, not the dark red, because we're going to come in with the dark red a little bit of this in here just in this middle part and then I can start to build this up. Now just working at the edge of this section here where these two parts of the bow meet I'm going to start with this red violet because I want to get the part of the bow in the background first and it's actually almost like an uneven line so I'm just gonna make it a little bit wiggly there. And that's just to give me a boundary to work to when I start colouring this top part so that I know where I'm stopping. I'm going to go into the pale geranium lake here. And I'm just going to bring that up to meet the darker red just now. As I say, this is just like me mapping out the colours and where I want them. So now that I've mapped my colours out, I can start working away on what I want to achieve. So this first section here is a lot darker. I was talking earlier on in the video about using light layers. I am being particularly light-handed. This is an ELO sketchbook that I'm working in and it is not the toothiest of papers. It does take pencil well considering how smooth it is but generally you wouldn't want to be using a really soft pencil if you were going to be in this sketchbook. 
Now I want to get a really crisp line here so I'm pressing a wee bit harder because this is obviously a shape that is very well defined and that's not always the easiest thing to do with pencil. Okay, for this ribbon part that's popping out here, I am just going to start with the dark red, the deep red, dark red. I always get dark red and deep red mixed up. I think there's a deep scarlet red. And then we've got a bit of a shadow as well, which I'm going to use the Payne's Grey for. And I'm just going to pop that in there. As I say when we get to this kind of underside bit, it is quite hard to differentiate what belongs to what. But you can just use your judgement. And you, again with the simple things like this, it's up to you how much time you want to spend on it. You can spend hours and hours doing this or if you're a little bit more impatient, you can, you can make it even simpler. If you don't want to spend the time doing it, by all means, if you do it in graphite, you're going to be able to do it a lot quicker. So you can see the way that I'm working around, like the logic that I'm using. Oh, I've got some sunlight. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the way that I'm working around, it's like logically leading me into the next section of the bow, which is kind of what I was hoping was going to happen. Oh, Woo's awake. I don't know where she is, but she's awake. And I am unusually, I'm working the wrong way around. Normally I would start over on this side, but I just fancied starting with that one and went from there. So I do have a few sort of smudgy bits on my on my paper but we're in the sketchbook it's no big deal this is an exercise it's not a finished piece so we can always tidy it up at the end I need to be careful I'm blown as well so I end up blowing my candle out oh goodness me I think one of the key elements of an exercise like this is learning to discipline yourself and be patient if anybody has an interest in working in coloured pencil or in pencil full stop you have to remember that it is one of the slowest mediums you'll ever work in. Okay, so that's me. I've got my base colour now. So I want to start looking at darkening down the areas where all our, our shadows are. And we've got this line along the top. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna work my way gradually darker and darker. So my next step down was my dark red. Okay, I'm gonna tackle this part in behind here because this gets quite complicated here. Did you hear that? That was Pip. It's because I'm ignoring her. She's so noisy. So what's happened now that this section's merged into this section, so I'm just going to go back in and add in some more of this Payne's Grey to really give us that, that definition that we're looking for. And again, it doesn't matter if it's not completely photorealistic. I would rather be able to tell what part belongs to what than have everything absolutely perfectly matchy-matchy with the with the reference image, but that's entirely up to you. That is a very personal choice. Okay, so we've got our dark red. Again, I'm just making sure that I'm keeping the tip really, really pointed, really sharp. And we can get this first line in. And it actually doesn't start till about here. And that is a, pr it's a pretty solid line. You know, there's not a lot of softness to the edge of this line. So again, back more to like the side of my pencil. Now there is a paler area under here. So I have to decide the line to stop at with this darker colour. I think it's going to have to be about there. Now it, it does look uncharacteristically dark. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of this Payne's Grey in. Oh, 
<laughs> oh no, my candle's gone out. <laughs> oh no. I think we might be done here. Oh no. That makes me a wee bit sad. Okay, so I'm going to work a bit more carefully on this one because there is a considerable amount of detail on this one compared to some of the others. And then this is quite a muddy area and under here there's like a kind of like a, a jagged line. And then I'm going to pop down some of the pale geranium as well. Because we've got this sort of lighter area in the middle. And finally a tiny touch of Payne's grey. So back to my two lightest colours and there is actually a hint of yellow in the reflection and it's because I've got a lamp on over there and it's just caught it and no more in one of these sections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some yellow out first and I'm going to pop it in there. So I'm just doing it lightly just now. I would really like you to look at how ropey this first layer of pencil looks going down and a lot of people do panic when they see this and you've got to remember you're going to be putting another maybe two, three, four layers on top of this. So do not judge your handiwork by this first layer of pencil. As long as it's relatively even, it doesn't have to be super smooth or anything because you that's the joy of pencil, you can work it and work it. Now that looks like a mess, <laughs> it just looks like a lot of lines and to be fair it is, it's just a lot of lines. But now we can start working in with our other pencils. So I've got my red violet here and I'm just going to start on this side, again that feels most natural to me despite starting on the wrong side. The wrong side of the paper for me to begin with. But there we go, we've got that nice and dark there. And then going back to my dark red, I'm just going to blend this out a little bit here and start following around where my highlight is. So you can see now it's quite easy for me to work in these mini sections. And again, if you're doing something that's quite complicated or you want it to look realistic, this is really helpful in not becoming overwhelmed with what you're doing. So I'm going very gently with the Payne's Grey because it is quite easy to overpower whatever it is you're doing. But if you go lightly, you can work with it quite well. Patience, patience, wonderful thing. Now this is a much more defined line in this section between between the dark section and the light section. Although it's a jagged line, there isn't so much of a gradient. So I'm going to press a wee bit harder here. And then we have a really dark section that kind of tucks under here. So no messing about, straight in with that red-violet. And again, I might just pop a bit of the Payne's Grey in there just to darken it down slightly. So for this middle section, which is, is quite difficult to see on the reference image, and I'm really sorry about that, but there, you know, there's only so much I can do with light and things just now. So again, we're going to abandon our two lightest colours, and this is for this sort of strange folded over one in the middle that looks a little bit broken. And I'm going to start with the dark red, because this is quite dark, because it's tucked in the middle. There's not as much light getting to it, therefore we have to make it darker. Now I do want to give it a bit of a richer red feeling, so I'm going to put a light layer of the geranium lake, <laughs> but just one layer. Now there is a bit of a reflection and it's actually coming off this part here. And it's kind of given us like a, a semi-circle shape in here, so I've got my lightest pencil now. And... I really want this to be quite defined because this is going to help shape where the other parts of the bow are that are in front. So you can see now just by doing that it's given me quite a defined line down this section and along here which is what you need when you're doing things like this because it does get quite messy. Around this top edge there is quite a light area so we can just pop that in first and again it must just be where 
the light is catching the, the subject matter. And this is going to go in here. Super dark. And then I can go back, back in with my dark red in the centre section here. Ooh. Now we've got this back section in here as well and it almost looks as if it's got a hint of yellow in it so I'm going to pop that down first. Again just oh so lightly and I'm going to go with the geranium lake. Now to keep that definition I'm going to put quite a dark line around there. It's not there to the naked eyeball and it's very difficult to see in the photograph but again this is us looking at the difference between a drawing and something that's in real life if you're going completely photorealistic this would be the wrong thing to do but again for the purposes of achieving what we want to achieve today this is perfect so same situation on the other side here as well nothing new here Honestly though, like I find this so relaxing and I really enjoy it and even just stepping back and look at it now, I'm quite satisfied with this, with what I see and that's the, like a huge thing for me. Even if it's really insignificant, I mean oh big wow, it's a, it's a bow that goes on a gift, but when you, even if you show something like this to someone who doesn't have a huge appreciation for art, they are still able to see really, really quickly how much work is involved in something like this because it's quite intricate. Again, not so concerned about this because it's kind of like tucked in behind, so not going to spend a lot of time worrying about this particular section. And then we've got this strange little back section in here as well, which has, again, it just must be a place where the, the light's hitting it. So if we use one of the lighter colours first, and then I can use the dark red. Okay, so we've got one last section to do here. Oh, look how much this is smudged. Oh, that's annoying. This is why I start right to left, guys. <laughs> And for this middle section, I'm going to work away with my dark red and my violet, red violet even. Okay, so we've still got this very faint outline of where the, the, the lid of the, the tin is. And it's not really of any consequence to me right now because obviously I wanted to concentrate on the bow. I'm quite happy with it the way that it is, but I just want to take a final minute just to put a little bit of what we call um, a cast shadow so the shadow that the bow is casting onto the surface that is sitting on and for that I'm just going to use a very light grey colour I think I'll go with I've got cold grey too here and it is not particularly sharp and that has been done on purpose that's why I've picked it we do have this section here which is where the sticky part wait till I get my spare bow out that this sticky part here you know the part that you actually put onto the present that just matches as my nails far too well. <laughs> um, and you can see a little bit of that so using the Payne's grey I want to just pop in and it is quite an uneven shadow because it's not sitting flat against the against the the tin lid so if we just pop that in there and then I can take this cold grey and just lay a little bit of that down and then I can put in with the Payne's grey on top I can put in the cast shadow of the actual red part of the bow so it's casting on to 
boys on quad bikes. There's so many noises today. This is why I wanted to film this yesterday. But we can just blend this out and it is quite dark. So I might even venture in because some of this reflected light and shadow is going to be projecting some of this sort of red colour. So I've just got the red violet here. I just want to pop a little bit of that in. And then what I'm going to do is take this cold grey and I'm just going to use it to sort of burnish and blend. Again, really insignificant part of this picture, but it's there, so we're, we were putting it in. Okay, so we've got quite a dark shadow here, but again, the same as I've been doing, I want to kind of map it out with my pencil. And again, I'm not, I'm not particularly careful about things like this. So I've got my pens grey again now and I'm just going to start working a little bit more into this shadow. And there are parts where it is darker than others and it's just because of the different facets and the way the light's falling. But again, it's, it's up to you how much time you want to spend on something like this. Personally, for me, I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm already saying to myself, my darling, like I'm done. The, the shadow is quite important, though, because that lets you ground whatever it is you've drawn. You know, it's not just floating in midair. I think it's nice just to get that sense of, okay, you know, there's, there's, there's something here. It's sitting on top of us. Like, can you hear Pip rattling her bowl about in the kitchen? <laughs> She's so funny. There you are. So I'm not taking a lot of care, but I'm trying to keep the, the shading smooth, even if it's not completely accurate. The transition from one area into the other, even though there's quite defined areas, you still don't want it to be a really sharp line, you know, like some of the ones you've got in here. Oh, there's Mr. Jem back. I feel you would have heard that as well. See what I mean? It's all go today. Okay, so I want to get a little bit more of this shadow in, because it's kind of a fun shadow. You know, it's a fun shape. Just add in this suggestion of the, the outline of the tin. If that's what I wanted to do. Again, because it isn't a finished finished piece, I'm not I'm not actually all that bothered about this, but I think it just kind of helps frame what we're doing a little bit because we are working just in this like corner of a sketchbook kind of thing, so and there we have it. I'm quite happy with that. I would love to know what you think of this. And if you've enjoyed this video, please let me know because this is the kind of thing that I would love to do. Maybe like a tutorial style set of videos in the new year or something like that. So if this kind of thing tickles your fancy, particularly in coloured pencil, any suggestions are welcome in the comments. And because uh, I find this really relaxing and this is like, this is my favourite thing to do. If, if you talk to me as an artist and not a YouTuber, this is my bag. I really really enjoy this uh, although it's very slow and very painful but it's the thera therapeutic part of art for me and this is what I like to do when I'm not filming videos so any comments are welcome on this at all um, I've got a printout hang on I've got a printout of the the reference picture so I just wanted to kind of show you those side by side as well so you can see I've followed it reasonably accurately but you can still tell that it's me that drew this it's very obvious by, by the st stylistic choices the weight of the pencil and how much I've lightened up the highlights you can tell that that is a gem gem drawing and that's that is what I love most about this so anyway I want to thank you all very much for joining me today. This is by far my favourite Cavemas video so far this year. And we shall see you back tomorrow for the question and answer video, which I am really looking forward to as well. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. I hope you're having a relaxing, festive period. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.